They threw a small crocodile into the sea and prepared to catch a whale for fun. Soon the sea began to shake the fish fishing. A small half-ton whale poked out of the water. The woman excitedly towards the recovery of the fishing line. Two strong men will be goldfish fishing up. The head weighed a ton and now only a bloody fish head remained. Just when they were in a trance, the yacht shook violently, as if there was something hidden underwater. Then a horrible scene happened. This is not the first time such strange things happen. A few days ago a lost submarine was found in the Weddell waters of Antarctica. Miraculously, this submarine was still 5,000 nautical miles away from Antarctica 46 hours before it was lost. What kind of power could transport a nuclear submarine, weighing several thousand tons, so far in a short period of time? Hundreds of people inside the submarine were still waiting to be rescued. The professor ordered the door to be broken by force, but the cabin was empty. Everyone disappeared into thin air, with no signs of a struggle. Half of the cards played and a bite of bread eaten were left intact in their places. Only the electronic equipment inside the submarine was damaged, short-circuited severely, and the navigation was completely out of order, like being hit by a high-voltage current. Faced with such a bizarre event, the professor acted very calmly, as if he had expected all this. After the submarine was salvaged ashore, the people only found that the hard submarine shell was actually fast denting and was huge teeth marks. In order to find out what happened to this submarine, the police sent another submarine. The mystery to dive at the incident point. Also on the dive was marine biologist Julie, diving to about 3,000 feet. Julie saw the mysterious world of the ocean floor and the hot volcano below. White smoke was rising near the crater, and the water temperature was already 417 degrees. Increasing the temperature, the closer you get to the crater. Just Julie head down to make notes. A mysterious creature outside the window a flash. The speed of even the radar did not capture him. Sensitive Julie but felt a hint of something strange. She was sure she saw a glowing thing swimming past. Only that thing ducked into the crater in an instant, where it was dark and deep. She decided to try a dive and went down to about 8,000 feet, where the depth began to rise and fall as if something was hitting the submarine. Then the depth climbed higher and higher. Something's coming up. Miss you coming again, we didn't copy that. He said something's coming up. What something's coming up? The scream stunned the crowd. Not only Julie but even the control room could hear it clearly. As the signal disappeared, the submarine was overturned by a huge force. Through the window, Julie clearly saw that a huge ocean monster was coming towards the submarine. A few moments later the submarine righted itself and the monster disappeared into thin air. Julie went ashore and told everyone what she had seen. Yet no one believed she had seen the sea monster. That night, two young boys went to the nearby sea to explore. In the darkness, they found some dense and huge fish eggs, and they took one of them away with curiosity and kept it in their own fish tank. They never thought that this was the beginning of the source of the good. The boy put a fish egg in his own fish tank, and the next day all the fish in the tank were gone. Jack carefully walked into the tank and found something wrong. The eggs he brought back yesterday had also disappeared. He hastily dials his companion Tom for backup and tells him straight away that the eggs have hatched. Just as Jack tries to cover this up, the fish tank suddenly bursts. Something flashes, and the desk lamp and TV flicker along. Along, thin tail fled toward the second floor, and Jack rushed to follow it. Finding a sticky cloud of liquid left on the floor, followed the liquid that thing into his sister Annie's room. Jack excused himself to use the toilet and followed up with the bathroom in his sister's room. He unlocked the door and prepared to catch the monster with his bare hands. Just this little thing is too flexible. Jumped into the bathtub, knocked over the hair dryer and even grabbed the bathroom curtain. Annie outside wrinkled his brow and kept knocking on the door, lecturing his brother to hurry out. In a hurry, Jack had to use the curtain to wrap the little monster. Fortunately, Tom came in time, with Jack temporarily move the little monster to the warehouse. Looking at this little cute, they cannot imagine that in the future he will grow into the master of the sea. Julie, who had seen the adult sea monster, was transferred to the research center to work. Here she met the professor who questioned Julie in detail. Any headaches in the encounter? No. Numbness on the left side of face or tassa? No. Such a detailed question. The professor asked nearly three hours. It is clear how much the old man knows about sea monsters. After understanding everything, the doctor warned Julie to let her stop the investigation of the sea monster, but also said that the institute has been taken over by the military. Julie was officially sacked and told to turn in all tapes and investigation information about the sea monster. Julie was a little reluctant, 
How could she stop the research immediately after such a long time? The secret that the professor tried to cover up has long since ceased to be a secret. Man Bob ready to go to sea operations. When he and his companions dive into the deep sea when he felt something strange, not far away a mysterious creature swam, although they escaped a disaster. But the companion with a fishing hook entangled the sea monster. The sea monster was frightened to swim forward at full speed. The companion was a strong force pulled forward together, and finally loaded in the barrier to crash to death. Bob would have liked to go forward to help, but the sea monster's speed is too fast. He simply cannot catch up, can only watch the companion was pulled into the seafloor. Bob's oxygen is also about to run out, had to choose to float, but due to the lack of oxygen, or passed out. When Bob woke up, still worried about his companion. Unfortunately, even if a rescue team was sent out, they still couldn't find him. Bob chanted that it was the thing that took him, but as to what it was, no one could say. Late at night, the grandfather and grandson in the Caribbean sea across the ocean blowing wind, and suddenly countless meteors slammed directly into the sea. A catastrophe was inevitable. A huge monster appeared at the bottom of the sea. The doctor fished one and began to do experiments. This guy a mouth as big as a room. Two rows of sharp teeth arranged neatly. The jack slowly propped up the upper chamber of the sea monster. Through the mouth can directly see its 40-inch wide spine. The doctor found that the jaws of the sea monster parasitized a large number of blind eels. These things rely on animal carrion to survive. Such a huge sea monster is their paradise. And soon the doctor's assistant had a new vent. Lungs yes, I can see them. You were right. Right about what Dr. Serco. It's a mambo. Rather than choosing to cut open the head of the sea monster to find out what happened, they chose to cut it with a laser technique. As long as long enough, this laser beam will be able to cut through even hard diamonds. Unfortunately, this time they met a hard bone. The laser beam in the sea monster's head did not play a role. The researchers kept asking for more energy. But this energy is still very small in the sea monster. So the cutting energy keeps increasing again. Ian on the sidelines noticed something was wrong. The display seems to be some kind of energy interference. Constantly flickering also issued a strange noise. The situation is not good. Ian suggested turning off the instrument. Shut it now. Give me a little more time. I said shut it down. Shut it down now. Ian was hit by a jet of liquid and bloodied. Although he temporarily saved a life, his face was severely damaged. Three inches of his skin was torn off. And even if he survived, he would not be able to see anyone. The doctor visits Ian who was wrapped in a mummy and still concerned about the autopsy work. Just as they were talking, Ian suddenly had difficulty breathing and yellow fluid spilled from a wound on his engine. His heart rate kept climbing as high as 300 beats per minute, which is simply not acceptable for a normal person. After resuscitation, Ian survived. But strangely enough, the high heart rate just now suddenly dropped, from 300 per minute to less than 5. It was strictly like hibernation. Originally, the doctor and the doctor were not hopeful. The next day, the sleeping Ian suddenly opened his eyes, then quickly got up and pulled out the various tubes on his hands, and unraveled the bandages alone. The doctor heard the commotion and rushed forward to check, just walked to the door and froze. Originally diagnosed as disfigured Ian, just two days of time actually recovered as before. The secret of the sea monster gradually emerged. Julie was sacked and ready to investigate the truth of the matter alone. But the military struck first. The island where the sea monster was found was sealed off and put under martial law, using the excuse that the water was poisonous to disperse everyone. Here, Julie met Bob, who also came to find the truth, and they decided to join forces. Late at night, Julie and Bob infiltrated the beach, taking advantage of the relaxation of security. Bob went to check whether the coast is safe. Julie and the child stay where they are and try to avoid the searchlights. The child, however, was startled by the blind eel around him and let out a scream, but the plan failed. Julie had to catch a blind eel back to study, cut open the abdomen of the blind eel, pull out the stomach sack, perhaps they want the truth is inside, 